It's a real pleasure to be with you today and to be able to share with you on the economic and social benefits from investing in food security. It's very obvious that there can be no peace and economic development without food security. But specifically, what in food security do we worry about? Very broadly, there are two sets of issues, production side issues and consumption side issues. On the production side, issues such as the declining and aging farmer population, climate change, environmental degradation, the declining performance of agriculture, uh, as expressed through yield gaps and increased losses. And on the consumption side, a growing population resulting in growing demand for food and also an urbanizing middle class population which is demanding diet changes more diverse and high protein food as a result of which there's also emerging as a food security issue nutrition related diseases of course then there's the diversion of food to feed animals and more recently the disruptions to supply chain resulting in shortages and price hikes when we look at the Korean Peninsula uh, and the agriculture and food production in the peninsula, uh, one cannot but help contrast the two parts of the peninsula. In this slide, I, I show in a very summarized manner some of these differences in agriculture and food production. The differences in crop yields as exemplified by the most important crop, paddy rice. In the south, paddy rice yields on the average 6.8 tons per hectare. In the north, paddy rice yields average about 4.3 tons per hectare. Quite a big yield gap indeed. There's then also the differences in labor availability. The south is a lot more mechanized than the north, although the north has much more agricultural labor. Now, in terms of actual production per capita, which is a very important measure, again, we find that the south has a much higher per capita production than the North. And similarly, uh, the final bullet point here, which is investments in foreign direct investment. Okay? This is key to drive change and adoption of technology. The South far exceeds the North. Uh, when we compare FDI in the South, you know, some $9,000 billion compared to the most recent data that's available for the North, about a billion to two billion dollars. So that's a really big gap in, in FDI, which is needed to fuel technology change and adoption uh, in agriculture and food production. The other key factor is technology. In this modern era, technology drives agriculture production. And here again, we see a big difference from this table that shows an assessment comparing the south and the north. Now looking down the second column of the table and comparing that with the third column, it becomes very obvious that in the south, the use of technology far supersedes that in the north. Use of fertilizer, improved seeds, pesticides, water management practices, and of course, in this particular uh, decade, digital agriculture. It's often been said that digital agriculture is going to be the most disruptive of all innovations in this modern era. And then, then comes biotechnology, which uh, allows us to, to breed new varieties of crops and animals. But here, the Korean Peninsula in general has not really invested that much in terms of our tech applications. So this slight take home message here is that there is a technology gap between the South and the North in agriculture production, which needs to be addressed if there is to be a leveling up uh, within the peninsula to, to even out production uh, potential. So what are some areas for investment to level up? the north and southern regions of the Korean Peninsula. I've highlighted some of these here. The most obvious are new crop varieties to narrow yield gaps and increase productivity. The same statement applies to breeds of animals as well. There's then mechanization. Mechanization inevitably leads to much better crop growth because of tilling the land uh, and so on. It also reduces drudgery for the farmer. 
And of course, nutrients. As I showed previously, fertilizer use is key and is more prevalent in the south than in the north. There's then pest control to reduce losses, crop losses, uh, followed by water management, precision technology to increase productivity, and of course, value adding to the raw produce. Uh, and this is very key to improve the livelihoods of small farmers by increasing the value derived to the small farmer. Now, of course, in total, supply chains and market links are very key to reduce distribution losses from the farm to the processes to the consumer, and also to, to ensure a freshness to consumers. And lastly, management knowledge. It is so key that smallholder farmers in particular know how to use their technologies, especially existing technologies. And this is different from the presence of technology. This is knowledge to use the technologies. So this slide really highlights those areas that, that, that require investment uh, for agriculture to improve and to be leveled up uh, between both regions of the peninsula. Uh, more specifically though, if we look at the entire production cycle, the food supply chain in other words, the technologies that are very obvious, you know, include things like the drones, fertigation, biotechnology, even robotics that can be used uh, in general to increase productivity. Now, of course, management uh, knowledge, including financial knowledge, uh, logistics and storage are some of the other aspects that can really help uh, improve the, the agri-food agri situation across the whole peninsula. Let me just finish off by saying that investing in food security helps us to avoid any potential Malthusian disasters. Uh, I think it's obvious to many of us that what is meant by a Malthusian disaster is when population growth exceeds food production. Okay? And the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has estimated that the world needs to invest $265 billion per year in agriculture to ensure that it meets the increase in food demand by 2050. We have certainly seen in many countries this last uh, two years uh, with COVID-19, how the pandemic has accelerated new ag tech development and adoption in Asia Pacific. It, it's actually increased the appreciation for food security. I would hope that you know this uh, change, mindset change, will also apply to the Korean Peninsula. So with that, thank you very much for listening to this short uh, presentation. Thank you.